time when it was believed that the shape of a person's head, its dimensions, could tell you if that person was a criminal. Those theories, now discredited, help establish the study of crime and of criminals. Criminology. You know, like all sciences, or maybe I should say uh, disciplines, the study of uh, crime has really changed a lot over the years. Now, one of the earliest formal methods of studying crime was called phrenology. And then, of course, we've had uh, fingerprinting for a long time, which up to that was considered to be the most exact science for determining uh, who a person was. But of course, now we have DNA. And that is the exact science for determining who's guilty and who's innocent. But in this course, we're not going to deal so much with the criminalistics as we are with the, the psychology of crime. What? Yes. Can I help you? What are you doing? Oh, I'm a Professor Maxwell. I'm doing a class on beginning criminology. That's fine. Except I'm Professor Fulton, and this is my intro biology class. Biology. Oh, I'm Then, uh... This is not Haney Hall. No. It would help a lot if all these buildings didn't look exactly alike. It might. First day of the semester, I think it get a little confusing. Seems that way. Class, I'll tell you what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to turn the class over to uh, Professor Fulton here, who's going to lecture you on the fascinating subject of biology. I mean, where would we be without biology, of course? Like back in the dark ages, probably. Thanks. Sorry, or maybe in the right classroom.